guys, we're back at Copart Salvage Auction, which is of course one of my favorite places on the planet. And today we're here to look at cars that under normal circumstances, I definitely could not afford. But when they look like this, or this, or definitely this, who knows? Basically what I'm getting at here is we're trying to live well beyond our means, which is of course the American dream. Yeah, I can't afford this. Now, of course, being the shop's resident Porsche guy, this is the first thing that caught my eye. We'll get to the Volkswagens and one very special Ford later, but first, this 2019 GT3 RS. Now at Salvage Auction, most of the cars we see look something like that. It's rare that you see a GT3 RS, a 200 some thousand dollar car that's totaled for something as seemingly minor as that. There are some issues on the inside of this car, but from an exterior standpoint, the entire passenger side is absolutely flawless, save a little bit of curb damage on this one wheel, but let's be real, we're not worried about that. The rear of the car, once again, absolutely flawless. It's simply a little dirty. The carbon wing, perfectly intact. I guess before we get to the damage, we can show them the weird stuff going on in the interior, namely the wrong steering wheel and very, very wrong seats. To me, these look like 996 seats. Honestly, they might even be Boxster seats if I'm not mistaken, but they don't belong in this car, that's for sure. Yeah, I have to assume this car came with the carbon fiber bucket seats, which are something like fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars on the used market, which is definitely why somebody took the time to take these out. Being that this is a 2019, it should also have the 991.2 steering wheel. They're the best steering wheel Porsche has ever made. They have slits there. They're really small. I think it's technically called the GT Sport steering wheel. And while they certainly could have put something worse in here, like say a base 996 steering wheel, this is, I believe, a 997.2 GT3 Alcantara steering wheel but it's kind of ratty and either way it's not right for the car yep these don't feel nearly as good as the carbon buckets like all things porsche related i'm probably going to mispronounce it but i believe this is a ysac edition ysac which okay so i, I was close right. yeah, i was close, close. so I believe that all of them did come with the carbon buckets, which is just maybe a way to confirm what we were already thinking anyway, that this thing had the carbon buckets and someone wasn't gonna let them go to salvage auction. I mean, I wouldn't have either, so I can't blame the guy. Raw pieces in the interior or not, a GT3 RS with this light of damage, if everything else is right with it, is still gonna pull a lot of money. And I suppose the most important part of this is that the engine's right. I mean, as long as it doesn't have a boxed or motor, I suppose it's fine. As you can see right there, it's of course supposed to have the four liter. Tell me it doesn't have a 3.4. No, it all looks fine under here. You scared me for a second. <laughs> You might not be able to see much under here, but everything does look correct. It looks like it also has an aftermarket exhaust, and most importantly, that lower skid plate's intact, which means the motor didn't get hit from the bottom. So it has battery power, the engine's intact. Hop on in, you know what time it is. Stupid key on the wrong side. Hey, that's a Le Mans key, buddy, or Le Mans starter, something like that. They schooled me on that in the comments a while back. 11,000 miles? 11,500 miles, which speaks to the very expensive tires that are pretty worn on this car. Well, that was easy. Oil pressure's good. Always something I'm concerned about on these, for obvious reasons. How are we looking from in there? So check tires, as we've already pointed out. Curious enough, it has an airbag light, which the is... Seats. Oh, good point, yep, yeah, okay. Yeah, these seats would definitely be responsible for that airbag light, maybe even the steering wheel. Think the horn works? Okay. Oh. All right, so something plugs in. One completely irrelevant note, I always find it funny when we find a car at salvage auction that has dealer-style floor protection on it. I have to admit, sometimes when I see cars like this at salvage auction that have had parts removed, the wrong stuff put in, it usually gives you a little bit of cause for concern. Maybe they did something with the engine. Does not appear that's the case here. Everything seems to be intact. It is all gonna come down to how much damage this thing has. I wouldn't say that it sounds good, but it sounds appropriate. But while we're at the back end of the car here, there's more damage back here than what is just up front there. Look, I don't know if I'm gonna consider this damage. It's just a dent. I could PDR that. This one though might be a little tougher. That's on the body line. Still though, I'm not gonna consider this necessarily damaged. The missing vent, I mean, whatever. I know all about that. <laughs> Ironically, the vent I lost off my 997 turbo probably cost more than this one. And yeah, I'm still mad about it. I've been mad about it for like five months now. But anyway, the damage up front, the most notable thing, this fender, this is an OEM carbon fiber fender. I think it's something like five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. And if you hear the words OEM carbon fiber fender, and you think that might be a little bit expensive from Porsche, you'd be right. These are over five grand a pop. So I guess that could have played a role into totaling this thing. After all, there are not many body shops capable of fixing this. You'd have to be 
really competent in composites, and I don't think any insurance company would even want to pay to do that. So for as minor as this looks, even though it's being held together pretty nicely by PPF, this is a complete write-off from the insurance company. On the topic of non-repairable, this front bumper, definitely not going to be able to fix that one. I don't know where that extra piece is, probably on the side of some New Jersey highway, but if you plan on fixing this, you're definitely going to need a complete new bumper. The side marker, that got blown out as well. Not a big deal at all. Funny enough, the harness itself doesn't appear damaged. That's a nice little bonus. You don't have to worry about any wiring. Thought, given that you just had to replace an entire wiring harness in an R8, I suppose you can elaborate to the benefit of that. Yeah, wi wiring sucks. This side radiator assembly sits really close to where that bumper got ripped off, but the best I can see, it didn't get touched. There could be some micro crack in the plastic. Actually, as I'm saying that, right there, but that's just the shroud. I'm almost having trouble believing how seemingly easy this car looks to fix. 99.9% .9 of the time, when things look too good to be true at salvage auction, they usually are. I guess we could talk about stuff like the front lip being cracked, but that could surely happen under normal use as well. The headlight does have some damage. That's a fairly big deal. They're a couple thousand dollars new from Porsche, but overall, the really big ticket items on this car, like the carbon fiber hood, they're perfectly fine. I have to say, this is easily one of the best RS cars I've ever seen at auction. And of course, because of that, I want it. The problem is it's going to cost a ton of money. I mean, minimal damage. Awesome options with the carbon hood and roof, the Y-Sock package. Missing parts or not, I'm sure this car is gonna pull over 100 grand. But given the fact that this is probably a $200,000 car if it's clean, that's probably still a great deal. We'll just have to wait and see what it goes for at auction. But for now, let's go ahead and move on over to a car that has a little more uh, obvious damage. Proud owner of one of these, so give me the rundown because I don't know what I'm looking at. The first thing that I have to say is that we're moving in the right direction with the motor. That rear engine stuff doesn't just doesn't work. You want it at least to be mid or in the front where it's proper. We probably got lucky the motor's in the back on this one because if it was in the front, ouch. Yeah, that wouldn't have felt good. But I do have to say, hey, at least the Porsche runs. Can't say the same for this thing. Now, unlike the GT3 RS, this one does have some obvious damage, but it does have some similarities as well in that it's missing some very important stuff that we'll get to in a little bit. Crunchy, wow. That's not looking so hot. Look at that aluminum frame just broken, ripped off, the grounding stud ripped out of it, the bottom section also ripped. That is, that's not great. Compared to the one I just watched Austin rebuild this one, um, I think this would be a little tougher. That is my professional opinion. Body panels, a hood, a bumper, a radiator, a core support, that's all replaceable. A giant one piece aluminum frame, it, it takes a little bit more work. and. I don't think this thing's supposed to have, you know, a 30 degree slope. So you're saying one guy with a chop saw and no frame machine couldn't fix this? Yeah, it might be a little too far gone. I'm really stretching for positives here. I can't even say anything about the wheels. So I mean, they're four stars. That's Mustang owner stuff. While we're down here playing detective on the wheels, I noticed something here. What does that say? What shop had their sticker on here? Ah, Ivy Tune. Yep, on the driver's side, you can make it out a little bit better. Ivy Tune. That is a popular place up here in the Northeast. On the topic of removed stickers, somebody had their Instagram on it and didn't want it on here anymore. Like the missing sticker, this thing is missing parts in this engine bay. While we can't get this hatch to pop open, even though we just put power to the car with a jump box, you can see it's missing the intakes, or in this case, more likely intercooler pipes, the entire exhaust, and way down there, the ECUs. Which means, of course, Somebody had some nice goodies on here that they did not want going to salvage auction and thought that they should remove them before it did. Specifically, goodies of the twin turbo variety. And it does seem that the robbing a car before it goes to the salvage auction is a very common thing here in New Jersey. Aftermarket parts aside that are missing, the ones that are still on the car kind of tell the tale. Heavy impact at the front end, but there's also plenty of damage at the back end. This here looks like this might have gone up against maybe another car or a jersey barrier. You can see that the rear wheel is not even centered in the wheel opening, which means that this has suspension damage of some kind. This rear piece isn't secured down and there's a massive gap here, which could be the rear wing being deployed, but there's definitely some interesting stuff going on there. Around to the driver's side, we have more damage on the quarter panel. The bumper looks to have damage and is completely shifted around. The wheel itself has a broken lip and also looks to be moved around so maybe even further suspension damage here on this side and to the front wheel you have a lot of damage to the lip and wow now that I'm looking a little bit deeper the entire barrel is destroyed so this thing definitely lost it at pretty high speed 
jumping into the interior on this car you have a lot of airbags deployed when i say a lot i mean pretty much every single one of them and it is a little bit of a shame because this thing looks to have some custom upholstery work in the interior i can't see anything Luckily, we can see something. Judging by the door panels, this car was not a super low option car. And you can see that on the exterior because it has the scalloped brake rotors. But I'm going to guess that they upgraded the dash, the seats to this Alcantara two-tone as a way to kind of band-aid the fact that this was a slightly lower option car. This is Alcantara and it definitely is aftermarket. There's a couple telltales that you can look at with the stitching, the way that the seams are laid that says this would not have left the factory looking like it. Plus, Audi just doesn't do it this way. They don't offer a two-tone version like this, especially with this nice kind of tufted diamond pattern here. It does have some embroidery in the headrest and the work looks to be pretty darn good i'm gonna sit here and nitpick the interior where i can but whoever did this they did a good job and it certainly wasn't cheap now luckily for this car the only bag that didn't blow is the dash airbag so maybe this dash will get to live on in another vehicle but my personal opinion on this one is that it's a parts car and still it's a scary one there is a lot of damage it's very very difficult to see exactly how deep it goes and there's a lot of missing parts in the back end that are extremely concerning as to how much was taken out of this vehicle this one though it's a way worse color reds awesome black kind of sucks but it's not missing anything at least as far as I can tell so far in the damage very very light very light indeed it looks like the damage from what we can tell now is pretty much limited to the passenger side of the car it looks like you have a door a side duct the lower panel and then a quarter panel and maybe just a tad bit of damage here to the wheel but even though this one's a worse color it is a higher option you see the beautiful carbon ceramic brakes in there which means that this car is a v10 plus honestly all that means is your brake change 50,000 miles from now it's going to be like 20 grand and while the red car was missing parts this one they added some and left them that is 100 not a factory exhaust this car does start or at least it's listed as starting on copart.com so i think we're even going to be able to start this thing up and hear it not only does it have an aftermarket exhaust but this carbon wing i assume is aftermarket you would know better than i would they don't come this high from the factory the factory rear spoilers are right about half this height I know this isn't technically damaged, but the rear badge, it's peeling. I don't know if it's aftermarket paint or what. Either way, all I know is you won't find it happening on a Porsche. It looks bone stock. Absolutely bone stock. One of the perks you get with buying a $200,000 car is all this carbon fiber in the engine bay, completely factory OEM quality. Because of that, it fits in, looks flawless. And if you look really hard, you can tell that this is a different weave than the wing. I think that backs up the aftermarket part theory. I feel like I'm, uh, you know, jumping to the good stuff here, but I, I just want to hear this thing run. Crank it up. extra cylinders but there is no way that there is a single person watching this video that thinks that that wimpy little flat six sounds better than this look all that is absolutely irrelevant the one thing that has going for it it's not a volkswagen i mean under absolutely no circumstance whatsoever could you confuse this for having a somewhat similar profile to a volkswagen beetle under no circumstance now as for the interior on this one aftermarket steering wheel forged carbon yellow stripe which unlike the last porsche i got out with the yellow stripe isn't a piece of tape which is pretty cool otherwise it looks bone stock in here well this is where you get some of the v10 plus options this has the upgraded Recaro seats which are absolutely beautiful and feel great but all of the exposed carbon fiber trim that you just mentioned is the v10 plus option showing through except for that forged carbon which is definitely aftermarket and one of my biggest pet peeves if you're going to put carbon in the interior of a car make sure it matches the right wheel the recaro seats are awesome but as far as spec goes stitching colors interior colors in general black on a little bit of carbon it's kind of plain the only extra bit we have in here is somebody left their garage door opener and I'm going to open their garage. Sorry to somebody in New Jersey right now. Really though, overall, this does look like a very nicely taken care of car with such minor damage that I 
can only imagine this thing was totaled strictly because of parts availability. The damage on this car is really just so minor, there's not a whole lot to talk about. Looking a little further in, it did get a radiator. They're not too expensive. This duct, ooh, actually, that's why it totaled right there. I do believe that's part of the interior structure of this car that will be considered frame damage, but I don't think that's something that's necessarily hard to fix. I just don't think insurance companies are gonna to wanna to deal with it. Yeah, it's gonna be kinda of hard to see, but there is definitely more going on in there once we dug a little deeper. And that is consistent with what you get on a car at salvage auction that looks like this. But regardless, this is still worlds easier than the one that you just repaired. So somebody's gonna get themselves a nice fixer and honestly, it might be me. Really, I just kinda of wanna go buy a newer one than Dalt so I can flex. High option, tasteful modifications, minimal damage. I think that this is a really, really good fix as well. I'll be excited to see this one back on the road. I, I know Carrington's too soft to go ahead and buy it, but somebody will get a good car out of this. Well, I mean, now we're gonna have to. Well, guys, we've made the first of two lot changes today, and we originally came here to look at that. But now we're gonna look at that because, well, you'll see. Follow along closely. This is a 1998 BMW Z3 that's been made to look like some type of old Ferrari, and that's not the best part. It's powered by a 427, that's right, a seven liter out of a C6 Corvette Z06. Yeah, not what I expected when I walked in here either. What uh, are we even looking at? I'm in love. Yeah. I love it. Well, no, I mean, let's be honest. We gotta be real about it. That is awesome. This car looks absolutely ridiculous. There's nothing cool about this car except what's in the engine bay, at least as far as I'm concerned. Maybe I'm just being a hater, but regardless, this is awesome. Carrington totally downplayed it. This isn't just some Ferrari lookalike. This might be arguably the most famous Ferrari that has ever been. Is that that one that got beat by that Ford in the movie? <laughs> Not that movie, but it is a movie Ferrari. Personally to me, it just kind of looks like an Alfa Romeo, so I'm not really digging it. One other thing that's quite curious, look at this intake design. I get wanting to use this hood vent, but that is a 180 off the throttle body. That necks down pretty good. I don't, I don't know this thing's making a lot of power. I don't know that it was designed for that reason though. Now, as weird as some of this stuff is, as for the rest of it, it's all very familiar to me. The accessory drive, that's factory Corvette Z06. The header is factory. Even the spark plug wire is bone stock. It has the factory C6 Corvette fan module, though this isn't the factory fan. It can't be. Either of that, or now it does say AC Delco. I don't know. Either way, this is absolutely wild a couple other things that are actually pretty cool it has the factory dry sump tank so they didn't wet sump convert the engine and then there's the factory chevrolet fuse box cover with an italian sticker on it that is that's a little much i think by anybody's standards that's a little much the biggest question that i have is what transmission is behind this thing i'm going to assume that it's an adapter plate to the factory manual transmission but looking down it looks like a gm bell housing eh. I don't think that's OEM Ferrari quality, even from the 60s. I know it wouldn't happen for Porsche. On the interior, it is all custom as well. It has a wood grain steering wheel that does feel a little plastic. I don't know how I feel about that. It has manual... No! Wait a minute. So this is made to look like a manual window, but there's a switch in there. It only goes that far and that far. There's definitely a switch. That's cool. A couple other notes about this interior. After all this work, they used the factory BMW key. I don't know how to feel about that, but they do have three pedals in it, which is all that truly matters. That's right, a proper manual transmission. In the trunk, ah yes, no Ferraris complete without the matching luggage set, or in this case, a random set of brown luggage that has plastic emblems on it. So I'm gonna guess that this car's name is the 427 Spider. I saw it on a badge in the engine bay. It's on the luggage, so I think that that makes it completely official and they even went as far as to just keep every single receipt paper documentation in some three ring binders that are also included with the car which we're not going to show you in case there's personal information on it look this definitely isn't my cup of tea but it is listed as running and i don't think there's anything you could put that engine in that i wouldn't love all right all right it's only listed as having 205 miles on it. 205. Yeah, that settles it. I just went from, I guess, indifferent is what you would call it, to being at least a mild fan of this car. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. Like, I, I literally am amazed with 
how somebody built this car. It is a full Corvette driveline that I would assume the dimensions have been changed to fit the wheelbase to get it to fit into this chassis. That's right, Z06 rear differential, Z06 presumably transmission, and some type of modified torque tube that you can't see because of this underbelly pan. This is absolutely wild. There's the fuel tank. It has some hefty fuel lines for a car that's not forced induction. It looks like they use some type of Corvette fuel pressure regulator, maybe a C5. One of the coolest things that I just noticed, Dalt, check that out. Factory NPP bi-mode exhaust section from the Corvette welded into this custom exhaust. It was decently loud with these clothes. I can only imagine if it was open. Guys, I don't remember the last time I've been speechless at salvage auction, though I have a feeling a little bit later today I'm gonna to be exactly that. This does it though, this really does it. I guess the question I have here, as cool as this car is, what do we do with it? Or what does anybody do with it? You could certainly buy this thing the part out. It's a super expensive engine, the drivetrain, that's another five grand. But I have a feeling nobody's gonna let this thing go for a reasonable number that would allow anybody to part it out. You could fix it, but where are you getting parts? If you guys know who actually manufactures this kit, I'm gonna do more research because this thing is I'm gonna make a bold statement here. It's the coolest car I've ever seen at a salvage auction. Somebody put so much effort into it, I think you have to fix this car. To let this thing go to a part out, you just can't do it, you can't do it. I mean, me personally, if I bought this thing, I think I'd take the drivetrain and put it in a regular BMW Z3. That would be even cooler to me. I mean, they already did all the leg work. Why not just take it, put it in a $500 Z3 body and have the ultimate sleeper Z3? That is, of course, unless you're a massive fan of Ferris wheels, they all, which I could see you wanting to fix it and leave the Ferrari body on it if that were the case. So I guess the question <laughs> that I'll follow that up with is, did we just find ourselves a buyer? I, I want this thing. I'm finding it real difficult to walk away from it, but I don't think there's anything else to talk about. And I came here wanting to hear Ferrari sounds from an actual Ferrari, not an imposter. Put it in the comments, tell him to buy this thing. I mean, I'm not buying it. I'm saving my money for a car I'm gonna see a little bit later today. I don't know, is this technically a real Ferrari if it's not red? It does have red on the inside. This certainly isn't what pops into people's mind when you say the word Ferrari, but I think I can understand the practicality of a Ferrari with four seats. Yeah, this isn't quite what pops into my head either when I hear Ferrari, but if there's one thing I'm a fan of, it's shooting brakes. I guess that's the proper term for this car, and it looks awesome. I don't know that there's many with this kind of rear profile. It is just disgustingly good looking. And yes, that is a compliment. Now, for as cool as the back looks, the interior, we definitely have some problems going on there. In the front, we have some real problems up here. I mean, real, real problems. There was an animal on the hood at some point. Yeah, what certainly isn't a problem is a twin turbo V8. Well, it's not a twin turbo LS, so kind of is a problem. So you're saying you want to buy the other LS Ferrari and put twin turbos it's on it? It's not a Ferrari, it's a BMW. But, but that's all, it no, checks all the boxes, no, carrying no. Personally, I don't think there's a V8 Ferrari or a V10 or a V12 Ferrari for that matter that couldn't be made better with a proper pushrod V8 and a set of spoolie turbos. As much as I wanted to hear a V12 Ferrari, we're gonna have to settle for the V8, assuming that the damage over here doesn't get anywhere near the motor and it is substantial as Carrington laid out. This pipe is smashed, but as far as the oil coolers, the engine itself, they all look to be perfectly fine intact and they did say it ran. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna ignore all of this the damage the frame rail being broken the suspension being all jacked up and we're only going to talk about how good this car sounds you know the positives i'm uh not gonna lie that's pretty disappointing i was expecting a little bit more there's got to be a button you can press in there right like make this thing louder siri make this car louder siri open the exhaust Okay, we can talk about the exhaust being quiet and very, very extremely disappointing all we want, but another good news, the engine's also very quiet and unlike the exhaust, that's a positive. How are we looking in there? Oh, dude, this thing's got a, pan a totally panoramic roof. Does it actually go off though? No, but it's... it's I it's, saw the glass. I yeah. didn't realize that. It's a full panoramic roof. That's awesome. I mean, Tesla did that for like $50,000, so...
Inside this thing is everything that you would want a Ferrari to be, except for the airbag deployment. Obviously, the windshield took a major impact, but the airbags are limited to just the dash and the steering wheel. This thing has airbags seemingly all over, and none of the other ones on the door panel ejected. There is beautiful red leather. All of it has black stitching, so you get the nice contrast stitch on the red leather, black on black for the top section of the dash. Even the sun visors are beautiful, hand-stitched leather. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful Ferrari embossing in the headrest, and I know that it's a four-seater, and I love that, but I would like maybe a little bit something more out of these seats. Yeah, I can't lie to you guys. This thing looks awesome. It really does. It's one of the better looking Ferraris I've seen, even though it's not a sports car. Is this even a car or is that the wrong word for it? Is this a crossover? I genuinely don't know. If Fernando was here, he'd probably call it a shell. But I do have to say, if I had to spend a ton of money on one very expensive car, like this one's gonna be, it's not this. It's the car that smoked it back in the 60s that we're going to look at right now. I'm speechless. I am absolutely speechless. I know in these videos, typically I'm just running my mouth nonstop. This is gonna take a second. You got, you actually might hear me be quiet. A 2005 Ford GT. This is definitely the first one of these that I've ever seen at auction. And as if these cars weren't already cool enough, this one's been modified by Hennessy with their GT 700 package. And yes, I am just taking a walk around this thing before I get started on all the damage because there is a lot of it. Either way, I think we can all agree, no matter how badly damaged this car is, it is absolutely beautiful. Unreal to see one of these in person. In fact, I've never sat in one of these. I'm gonna sit in this in just a bit, and word on the street is it even runs. I don't know, at this point I'm just so mind blown. I don't even know where to start, so I suppose we'll just start right here. Driver headlight, it's good. The hood's good. That truly might be the only parts on this car that are good. The front bumper, that's ripped off on the passenger corner. It's all broken down there. Underneath the car, it definitely ran over something. There's all kinds of mud, grass. The passenger wheel is nowhere to be found. Sometimes we'll find wheels stuffed in cars here at Copart. Not today, it's completely missing. The rest of the passenger suspension, the strut is there, it's broken though. Upper control arm's there. All the joints are ripped out. Upper, sway bar, lower, the tie rod's gone. This thing took some kind of hard hit. From up here, I thought the passenger fender was in decent shape. The headlight, of course, is broken. It has a big chunk out of it. I have no idea if this is something you could get like a replacement lens for. I truly don't know much about these cars. I did assume, or think at least, the passenger fender was gonna be good, but down here it's ripped just a little bit. It's definitely aluminum. Maybe you could fix that. I suppose on a car that's this expensive, you would definitely try to fix it. The side skirt, that's completely broken. It's missing a chunk out of the bottom. The passenger door, I don't know, that looks like it's okay. <laughs> Excuse me, did not expect that. All right, the passenger floor, however, not only is it not okay, it's completely missing, gone. Fred Flintstone style. I don't know if this is a Hennessy package or a Fred Flintstone package, but I can tell you that's not what I expected to see when I opened the door. Other than that, at least, the interior looks okay. This back window, wow, that is cracked. That's, that's incredible. That is a lot of force to do that. There's no physical damage to the outside of it. That has to just be torsion. That's pretty wild. The seats, they look okay. The rest of the interior, other than the e-brake being popped out, Looks nice, and I do think nice is gonna be hard to come by on this car. The passenger rear suspension, while it's not as bad, I guess, as the front, even though that whole section of frame seems to be ripped, it's twisted like 45 degrees. Most of the arms are there, and the wheels here, which I guess is, I don't know, something. This rear fender or quarter panel does appear to be intact, not bent. That's pretty decent. The rear windshield that covers that supercharger, that's intact, the trunk's intact. We're making some progress here until we get back here where you see that the entire rear bumper's been opened up. Not only has that been opened up, wow, this is full surprises. No floor, no transmission case. I can touch a gear. That's gear oil, great. I'm gonna smell a gear oil all day now. The exhaust is broken in half. The rear section of it's missing. This frame horn is just gone. This is just impressive. Anyway, the driver's quarter fender thing, that appears to be intact. The scoop's intact. 
the side skirts once again intact the driver's door also so there is some good to this car this looked shockingly bad when we first rolled up on it and now things are getting better the driver's side even has a floor i really don't know what more we could ask for at this point even the suspension gets a little better over here this wheel is definitely cocked the wrong way but it's there and i don't know the wheel itself could be straight one thing i did just feel though wow those tires are hard i just kind of dug my fingernails in there not even thinking much of it What's the date code on this? Man, unfortunately, all the way around, the date code's on the inside. Just by feel, though, these tires are hard. Could that have contributed to the wreck? Possibly, but I guess we can't speculate, given that we really don't know what happened. Now, I do have to say, this is kind of depressing that this is the first GT I'm ever going to have sat in. Still feels awesome, though. I mean, I don't know. Again, speechless, don't know what to say. Rarely am I at a loss for words. This is one of those times. I kind of feel like this is gonna take my head off. Wow. That is like driving into a parking garage in a 10 foot tall truck. That does not feel great. Maybe I'm a little too big for this car. Now, all of you that watch these videos know that we don't often start cars at salvage auction. If there's questionable damage, we don't wanna risk it, especially on a car that's this expensive, a half a million dollars if it was clean. But on this one, we got special permission from the general manager or co-part in this area. He a okayed it, he said it's fine. He said it starts right up, we've started it up. Feel free to start it up. I'm not gonna say no. I'm just not gonna say no. I don't know when I'm gonna get the chance to do this again, so here we go. Well, first and foremost, that's really good to see. Oil pressure, A-OK. -okay. That was my biggest worry. I was ready to smack that start button off so fast if that thing didn't fire up quick. I know it might look bad, but it sounds amazing. We saw some absolutely amazing vehicles in this video. And since Carrington and I recorded this, some of them actually ran at auction. I wasn't able to watch the actual auctions. I am very busy wrapping up my R8 rebuild with eBay Motors and Carrington is extremely busy working on the Demon. I know everybody wants to see updates on that. I did see the final pre-bids. The GT3 RS was $100,000. Isn't surprising, that car's going back on the road. The black R8 was pre-bid to right about $65,000, which again is not surprising. That one's going back on the road. The red R8, as terrifying as that car was, was pre-bid to like $41,000. Very, very scary car from what you saw in the uh, video here, but hopefully that car maybe wasn't as bad as it appeared. Who knows though? Very scary. The two most interesting cars, the Ford GT, I didn't get to go with Carrington to see that one, but seeing him basically completely speechless, I think just speaks to how crazy of an accident, the wreck on that car, the damage on that car, and that car is going to be interesting to see what it sells for when it goes at auction. It is a high value car. I think the low options of those cars are selling for like $350,000 on up, most of them around half a million dollars, but it's a very limited market. So who knows what that could actually sell for, who needs the parts for it, et cetera. Etc. Et now, the Ferrari, the replica 1961, I was completely captivated by that car. I absolutely loved it. I absolutely want to do a rebuild on it, but I need more information. And if you have some of it, if you know anything about the car, definitely reach out, comment down below, send me an email, something along those lines. I was able to find out that that car sold on Bring a Trailer earlier this year for like $268,000. So whoever bought that, I hope they had a good insurance policy because that's a lot of money to cover. But I think the car was worth it because I found a YouTube video on that car. I think the person that built it is down in Florida and they actually own an original one of that. They built the replica, I think as a way to maybe drive one without having the financial risk of driving the real one. But that explains why it was done so in-depth, so much detail, looked to be really, really accurate. Such a cool car. I hope I can get more information on it, and I hope that I can have a real shot at maybe buying that one because it was definitely the most interesting car to me. Let us know down in the comments, though, what was the most interesting car to you. We always love hearing your feedback, and uh, definitely thank you for tuning in. We love the support that you guys show us. We're having a lot of fun making these videos, and I hope that you're enjoying them just as much so thank you for tuning in as always we'll see you in the next video yeah but i mean you could very well put nankangs on here and be fine now of course being the shop's resident porsche I just like twisted my <laughs> that is 100 percent not a f damn sun's come in i'm sure they make 21 inch nankangs right <laughs> get that on camera i did dang he's still moving that'll go in the outtakes <laughs>
Then the pedo come after us. I know. Most of the cars we see look something like. Oh, that's fucking blurry. I hope I got that. It's cracked my head on that thing there. Stupid half a million dollar car. Two zero five. Yeah, that's right. I've seen Linglongs in that size exactly. 